Bonjour, I'm Tim. And I'm Karen. And welcome to another episode of Living a French Life. Right now we are sitting on our installed septic system which means we are soon to have uh, a bathroom in the little house at Glandine. Yes, it's very exciting as uh, some of the big projects start uh, getting finished. Uh, we can kind of see the, well, it's not really the light at the end of the tunnel, but we, we at least know we're in the tunnel. So. <laughs> the septic system was the biggest job that we needed to do and the most expensive. Right, uh, because it required skills and materials I don't have and could not easily access. But I was really surprised it only took two days for them to install it. It did leave our garden in a bit of a wreck. <laughs> We've got a large pile of rocks, but uh, I'll give you a peek of that later in the episode. Right, uh, so that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna show you the installation of the septic system. It's very exciting. And, uh, and then Karen got all excited about the fact that we were having the septic system installed. And uh, she decided to get working on her idea for the sink in the powder room. Yep, I picked up something uh, that used to be a cistern from an old toilet that would hold the water above the toilet. I thought it had great potential. You get to see the before and, uh, and the progress that I've made so far. Great, and then just to fill a little bit of time, I'm going to show you how to air root an apple tree. We wanted some apple trees in our hedge. So, yes. <laughs> so we don't know yet if it's going to work, but I got a good feeling about it. And it was a really tasty apple. Yes, it's true. So, uh, like and subscribe, and uh, allons-y. Glendine is a hotbed of activity this morning. It is a grand projet here at Glendine today. We have not only the big digger, but we also have a little digger. So they've got all, all things covered. And then here's, here's what amounts to the most expensive, expensive part of our budget here, is this little guy. Glendine has never had running water, never had a salle de bain, never had a bathroom. So this is one of those days that's really monumental. You know, it's, it's creating just a, 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 a marking chapter in the story of this house. to bring the truck around the back. We'll dump it there and we're gonna have to figure that out as part of our garden plan um, as to how we're gonna terrace it and what we're gonna do. I'm hoping that we find a few good rocks that I'm gonna be able to use for my stone steps going into the garden. So we'll see what comes, comes out of this hole. It's amazing the things that excite you when you have an old house. This is some great looking big rocks that we're gonna be able to use to rebuild the stone, uh, stone wall in the garden. And yet another gigantic vehicle. Woo. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hey, Karen, you, I want something's gonna blow your mind, okay? I want you to come see where the drain comes out of the wall. Okay. What? Are you kidding me? I know, who knew it would be so far down? Wow. Wow. Well, okay, first of all, that is one beautiful hole. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Did you get video of them drilling that? I did. That is impressive. Did they have to wet wet yeah. the stone? Ah oui, ah oui. Mm. Formidable. Well, now we can understand why it's so nice and cool here. Yeah. That, you know, we're in the earth and mm -hmm. the stone. You know, if it ever gets too hot in the summer and you can't find me, I'm going to be down in your wood shop. Okay. <laughs> so... This is some of the, the dirt and rubble coming out of the, the hole for the septic. And it is exactly where my dye kitchen is going. So that will be a project for another day. And uh, but I've got a lot of great rocks here that are going to eventually be used um, to create a new wall. Same height there, but something a little bit more organized. And then we're going to create a hedgerow along this uh, parameter of the garden. And uh, then some terracing with some steps up to the top part. And that's the plan. So at one point, these, these uh, stones are gonna be very important to us. But right now, it's exactly where my dye kitchen's supposed to go. Actually, um, this, this old cast iron piece is not in too bad of shape. You can see that on the outside here, we're, we're not too far off from getting down to the metal. The inside where it used to hold uh, a century of water, it does need a little bit more work. And uh, we're going to scrape off some of this rust, the big flaky stuff, with a wire brush. And then we're going to submerge the whole thing in vinegar. I scraped off all of the big chunks on the inside of this old toilet cistern. And I think soaking it in vinegar is gonna help me get the rest of it off. We're gonna use this big plastic bucket here. And then I'm gonna use vinegar. Uh, standard household vinegar is about 5%. This is twice as strong. So let's see what happens. You're going to want to make sure to wear a mask, we're doing it outdoors, and have your eye protection on. I am really pleased with how we got all of the rust and we've still got little bits of old, old paint into deep grooves, but I just love how it looks. And we're just going to wax it with a special uh, wax made for cast iron to prevent oxidation. However, 
we did not succeed so much on the inside. Not bad. Here's the outside of my soon-to-be half-bath sink. The strong vinegar, wire brush, and a lot of elbow grease took off all of that rust. And then I just uh, waxed it. Canuba wax, beeswax, waxed, waxed, waxed. And it has a fabulous finish. Now, granted, it's going to require to be, you know, re-waxed once or twice a year, part of my spring clean and fall clean. But I love it. The inside, the inside, not so good. As we thought, it's going to need more attention. So Tim is going to take the angle grinder to it, smooth it out, and then an epoxy primer and epoxy paint. And then plumb it. It goes into the half bath. Uh, the sink set me back five euros or approximately five dollars and fifty cents. And of course the vinegar. I already had the wax and the elbow grease. I just am pleased as punch. And we're gonna take advantage of this beautiful spring weather to get some free trees. All you're gonna need is a few simple items that you might already have around the house if you're any kind of a gardener. You're gonna need some plastic to keep the moisture in, some tin foil to keep the light out, some very wet peat moss. Uh, they call it uh, mousse, au, mousse de tourbe over here in France. And uh, you're not, it, you want to get it good and wet, but you're not going to keep it that wet. I'll show you in just a minute. And then I also mixed up just because I had it on hand. And man, I want to get every single kind of edge I can get. Uh, a little bit of rooting hormone. Not strictly necessary, but you know, why not? If you can get an edge, take the edge. You're also going to need a very sharp knife. I like this because razor blade doesn't get much sharper than that. And some tape. Uh, this is fancy French electrical tape. <laughs> Actually, German. Got this when I was in Berlin. But uh, it'll do the job because you need something to seal it all up. On this particular apple tree, which uh, had such delicious, juicy apples, I decided we needed to get... We're renting in this place. But I asked the owner and he said it was okay if we did this. These are three likely branches right here that we're gonna turn into our very own trees and we're gonna plant over at our place, which is just over the hill over there. So, what you want is strong verticals, nice verticals. That's how you can really uh, have something that's gonna likely turn into a tree. The other thing you want is you want it to be about as big around as your thumb. Nice and easy to handle. You wanna select some places where you've got some leaves above you so that it can photosynthesize and do the thing that it needs to do. And you want to do this in the spring when the sap is running, because then you've got a really good chance that the roots are going to, are going to happen. What we're going to do is we're going to select a really good part of the branch here, and we're going to cut a section about an inch and a quarter, two, three centimeters long, right about here. And we're going to take that and we're going to score all the way around. And then we're going to do the same thing like I said, about an inch and a quarter up. And then we're gonna take our knife and cut straight down between our two cuts. Get in there, Rob. Okay, then we're gonna carefully lift off the bark. Uh, 
All right, so we've taken off the outer layer of bark and you can see this green. That means this is all good live material. This part here, this white part that covers the inner wood is called the cambium. The reason you cut the bark is because if you don't, the tree will try to heal itself. So that's why you have to make a good clean cut. And just to make sure that we're making that clean cut, we're also gonna scratch up the cambium. We don't want there to be any way for this tree to try to heal. Because if it heals, it'll spend all its energy trying to heal instead of making roots, which is what we want. Now, the roots, if this is successful, because I am no garden expert, but if it's successful, the roots are gonna come right out of here. As I mentioned, you don't have to do this part. I'm adding in the rooting hormone. It's not strictly necessary, but since I had it, why not? Our next step is we're gonna take some of our peat moss and we're gonna make a ball that's gonna go around this spot that we just prepared. And we're gonna cover that up with this plastic to kind of hold, so we make sure we're holding in the moisture. Now, as you can see, it's dripping wet. That is way too much water. We need to get rid of that. So it's still wet, not soaking, dripping wet. All right, so we're gonna take our peat moss and we're gonna wrap it around our, our cut. And then we're gonna take our plastic wrap Next up is our handy dandy tape. You want to seal off this bottom because it's going to take about four to six weeks for the roots to be large enough that you can transplant. So you want to make sure that you seal this off really well. Okay, so we got a good moist peat moss on our prepared cut. Now it's time to put the tin foil on to block the light out because if the light can reach to the wound, it will photosynthesize and we don't want that. We want it to produce roots. So we're gonna take our tin foil. Might be just a little overkill here with this. <laughs> And what you're trying to do is you are trying to block out the light. Okay, a little tape on it just to be extra secure. And that's all there is to it. Now, in four to six weeks, we'll take a peek at this. We'll see if we had success. All right, so now Mr. Pujada is uh, digging the trench that's gonna lead from the septic tank. So the clean, cleanish water is going to come out of the septic tank and it's gonna run through uh, drain field that is gonna go in this trench that he's digging right now. It's gonna run all the way back through to the wall. It's surprising to me. I thought uh, most of what was gonna be under this tile was uh, rubbish, uh, broken tiles and and you know maybe even garbage for that matter. But it all it's almost all rocks and dirt, which is. Uh, a good sign. Um, it means that there's maybe going to be some things we can utilize for uh, doing our raised beds and for uh, rebuilding the wall. 
So now we're going to scoop in some gravel. He's going to put line the bottom of the trench that he's just dug, and that is uh, going to be best better for filtration, getting the water down into the ground. <laughs> All right, so this this now is going to be sand here. It's a real nice moist sand. They're going to use this to fill in around the septic tank so that you don't get any weird settling from uh, just using soil. Uh, that is water going from our connection into the septic tank in order to make sure it doesn't float away. And uh, there's a lot going on. Give you a look at the destruction in the garden. Here we've got the truck full of gravel that is going into the uh, trench. Tim and I had to quickly move my beautiful pile of aged compost. So we, we managed to save that. <laughs> look at this poor garden. It's going to be like a mud pit when the rain comes, but got to do what you got to do. This is the little digger. And uh, there's the big digger. Right now they are filling the hole around the septic with an appropriate uh, sand mixture to make sure it is well positioned, not going anywhere, no settling. So that's what's happening here and he's filling it and they've been working all day. And uh, yeah, he's that. My dye studio is going to go right there <laughs> one day. Wow. And then here we go. Here's our trench. And the pipe uh, is already in there onto the gravel and then it's covered and more gravel and and uh, the water's not potable on the other end, but the system is pretty amazing. That water can flow into streams or gardens and absolutely no problem after the filtration. It goes through three different tanks. So it's pretty incredible. <laughs> filling in the trench now. Mr. Pujada is nearing the end here. We've got our spank uh, verification that everything is done to correct norms. So now it's all over except uh, filling in the holes and making everything look pretty. What we're working on now is to pull back some of the soil so we can capture more space for the garden. But we're going to have to put up a retaining wall so as to not undermine the structure for what is the most expensive project for this house, the septic system. So we're very fortunate that uh, we have some artisans who are 
uh, both uh, friendly and flexible. <laughs> so this big pile of rocks uh, is being moved over here for us. So we have room to make our balcony and uh, Karen's potting shed. And uh, yeah, <laughs> no, no, messy. <laughs> And, uh, and then it's gonna cut into the hill a little bit here, roof some of the rubble, but uh, leave enough in so that the dirt stays up. And with that, phase one of the septic system is complete. Uh, now all that's left is to install all the plumbing, uh, install a bathroom, install a kitchen sink, faucets and things like that it's yeah. very exciting yeah but those are all projects yes. for a different day yes but um did you see the shape of the garden <laughs> it's pretty rough uh, also another project for another yes, day it's true well our garden is a bit of a wreck but I think it was worth it because we do have a septic system. It's true. There are a lot of very large rocks and I am sure Karen will come up with all sorts of wonderful things to do with those it rocks. It turns out I'm channeling my inner <laughs> stonemason. I, I don't know, but I'm really enjoying it. And since I finished all the pointing on the interior, I had to turn my attention to the stones here on the exterior. Uh, yeah, Karen's been doing a really uh, bang up job out there in the garden. Uh, you remember from the previous episode where she laid out what her plans were for the garden and she's actually started putting some things in the ground that are the permanent places for these plants. You should start with your hardscapes first, so I am going to work on that stone wall and uh, a small retaining wall we need to do behind the septic here so to keep the dirt from flowing into the garden. And uh, for me for next week, I'm going to show you some things on the floors that I've been working on. Uh, putting them, installing them, uh, sanding them, repairing them, getting them level, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. So that should be at least uh, visually appealing. All right, so then make sure you like, subscribe, hit that little bell icon so you receive notifications for when the new episodes drop. Uh, and that also is really good for the Google algorithm, the, the the YouTube algorithm. It helps people uh, who like these kind of videos find our video. There you go. Yeah. So, until next time. No, wait. Yes. You have got to stay to the very end. Oh, because yes. Because that <laughs> is where the outtakes are. And uh, frankly, I think they're hysterical. It's, it's where the magic happens. Yes, so. yes. Do I need to have to remove that? <laughs> uh, yes. So, until next time. A tout à l'heure. It does say 125 uh, kilograms max here on the thing. I, okay, if we're on the edge, you're on the edge, and we don't, I don't weigh know. that much. Lucy could be throwing us off. <laughs> um, okay, so it's the outro. I'm helping, I'm helping Tim. <laughs> Are you helping? Lucy's helping. Okay, thank you, Lucy. All you're going to need to do this is a few simple items that you can very likely find around the house if you're any kind of a gardener. <laughs> Hit that little bell icon so you're notified when the new episodes come up.